Well, this is, a, this is an exciting day for me. It's been a long day uh, coming. I'm excited to share with you uh, some of the game day enhancements that we're going to be doing for the upcoming uh, football season. And I think, um, I'll talk a little bit about the process first. I think one of the real challenges for anyone who's involved in a leadership position, and I learned this when I was involved in government politics, but I think it applies to the public service of being the AD at a, at a major uh, public university, is that you've got to keep looking at your uh, role and what's going on with external eyes. And that's real easy when it's new. And it's easy when you're um, uh, challenging uh, the uh, views of the previous regime. And it's easy when you're solving the problems of the previous regime. It's harder when you've been there long enough to create your own problems and your own things that need to be reevaluated. And so it's sort of like the revolution. You know, you need to, uh, you, you need to try to avoid becoming the status quo and avoid avoid uh, those great philosophers, the who's warning, uh, you know, a welcome to the new boss, same as the old boss. So we're trying to keep kind of a campaign edge, kind of a revolution edge and uh, challenge ourselves um, just like uh, just like we sort of challenged the things that, that were here when we when we got here, believe it or not, five five years ago. So after last football season, I brought our staff together and challenged them to take a total wholesale look at the way we run our game day operations and our most specifically our game day experience. We had introduced a lot of things that first year when the North End Zone opened in 2009. Not Whole Park, Kicks for Keeps, the Red Light Special, $5 tickets for youth, a variety of things. Uh, you know, we put the wrought iron fence out there, put some branding in. Um, and I'm not going to say it, that I thought things were getting stale because I think it's been going very well, but I thought at the five-year point, we really needed to step back and take a really close look at the way we were doing things to make sure we kept kind of a campaign edge the way we were uh, addressing uh, the football game day experience. So we started doing that. We started meeting on January 9th. We met basically every other week. The really cool thing about that was it was highly collaborative. We had the football staff involved. Kevin was very closely involved. Kevin and I have met on this many, 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 many times. Um, we had uh, uh, other people within the athletics family, if you will, the uh, uh, Marching 100, the Red Steppers, the cheerleaders. We also had people, a few concentric circles out, uh, the Intrafraternity Council, the Panhellenic Association, um, the uh, 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 orientation leaders that are real close to the, to the kids, uh, residence hall people, and just really tried to take a comprehensive look and say, we're going to tear this down to zero and not assume that anything stays in. We'll only keep the stuff that we think is good and let's add some new stuff as well. So, so this was motivated, A, uh, with that in mind to say, let's take a new clean look at what we need to be doing. And B, I believe, and I've said this to you, you guys uh, before, uh, we need to show progress each and every um, season in terms, of, uh, in terms of our investments in football. So the first season was easy. It was the North End Zone, um, the, uh, the new uh, Strength and Conditioning Center, uh, the meeting rooms like this. The second year, we put in the gigantic scoreboard, which at least at the time is in the top 10 in the, in the country. The third year was really the investments in, in people, um, the new coaching staff, doubling the salaries of the head coach, doubling the salaries of the assistant coach pool, going from two strength and conditioning coaches in football to the NCAA maximum of, of, uh, of five. Um, uh, last year, we put in the uh, new um, artificial turf uh, in the practice facility. That was like about a $700,000 item. This year, we've uh, continued with some branding that we'll look at today, uh, made some additional investments in our coaching staff to help uh, uh, retain those. So um, this year, in addition to wanting to just generally as a matter of uh, uh, practicality, look at the new, uh, look at look at new op opportunities for enhancements. Also, do some things to show people that we still care: our fans, our current student athletes, our prospective student athletes, um, and our coaching staff. So, uh, with that as a wind up, here's the pitch. And this is very extensive. So, if you guys want to, you know, break for lunch in the middle of it or something like that, that's fine. I'm just going to warn you: we got a lot of good stuff here. Um, I'll start out with uh, infrastructure improvements. Um, and this, this goes from sort of the pedestrian to the more exciting, but I don't know how many of you have noticed those old boxy TVs in the old concourse with the uh, 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 plexiglass around them with pigeon droppings all over it. Those are gone. We've got flat screens uh, in, the, uh, in the old concourse area to complement the flat screens we had in the new concourse um, area. We're installing a DAS or distributed antenna system. All those crazy antenna war of the worlds things uh, at the top of the uh, stadium. 
Those are antennas to help improve the connectivity for texting, for cell phone usage. Um, I'm pleased to report that Verizon's in, so if you've got Verizon, you'll be in good shape. I'm uh, less pleased to report if you're like me and have AT&T, they, uh, they haven't done the deal yet. So we're hoping to get AT&T um, in the fold, but I do think it'll improve dramatically the game day experience when we're full up and people can actually text you know, each other, uh, have access to their um, uh, uh, phone usage better than they do now. Eventually, I like to go to Wi-Fi. That's probably a year or two away, but anyway, we'll have the DAS system. We've done a variety of cleaning up things in the concourse. We've painted the uh, concourse risers. Um, we've removed dead speakers. I don't know if you notice those old MASH speakers. They look like they were from 1957. They weren't actually connected to anything. They just were there looking stupid. So we've taken um, those out. Um, we've done a lot of work in the concession stands, uh, put in new roofs, uh, uh, new lighting, new wiring. There's a new food delivery system, which should um, help the food be uh, warmer, hotter, fresher, uh, quicker to our uh, customers. Uh, take, taking out some old fencing and some other uh, nasty stuff. This is another thing, I don't know if you guys can relate to this, but when you're like a homeowner, you quit seeing stuff that needs to be fixed. You quit seeing that spot on the ceiling or the cracked window or whatever. And we tried to walk through and take fresh eyes like we we're going to put our house in the market or something. And here's all the stuff that we need to fix that we sort of looked past uh, for too long. Uh, you know about the Indiana, uh, USS Indiana Prow. We're excited about that taking its rightful place back here at Memorial Stadium. We're also bringing back the cannon. Some of you may remember uh, that little bitty cannon that we would shoot off when Indiana football scored. Now we got a big old gigantic cannon that the ROTC brought in. They called it, uh, they call it Big Jake, which is named after a brigadier general who actually started the military service um, curriculum here in 1840, entered the Civil War as a private, and through battlefield promotions was uh, promoted to brigadier general. I've got more details if anybody's really uh, interested in that, but the ROTC named that Big Jake. It's got a great uh, connection and tradition with Indiana University um, and, uh, and our, and our uh, support um, for the military. We've created platforms so we can actually get the cheerleaders off the field and up into the stands. They'll be physically in the stands with the student section, which will help us, uh, I think, create more uh, excitement with the, uh, with the students and especially with the new uh, cheers and traditions that we're, uh, that we're creating with the student section. We've added three new t-shirt machine guns, so now we're up to four t-shirt machine guns, which will be located strategically throughout Memorial Stadium, um, which generates its own uh, kind, of, uh, kind of excitement. Uh, again, this, is, this won't be highly visible, this won't be visible at all really to our um, guests, but we have a new and expanded uh, game day um, command center for uh, crowd control, dealing with emergencies and so forth. And in this day and age, I think it's important that we continue to upgrade our capacity and ability to deal with those issues, and we've done that. With a, uh, with a new command center in the press box. Of course, the thing I'm most excited about is the tallest flagpole in college football, 154 and a half feet uh, flagpole. It's gonna be dedicated at the Navy game, although as you can see, or will be able to see or have seen, it's up and running now. The flag on it is 30 by 60 feet. We, it was donated by a member of our varsity club, National Board of Directors, um, which, was, which was awesome. And we're gonna really incorporate that into the pregame the flag will go up while the national anthem is being sung by the, uh, by the uh, uh, crowd. Um, the uh, uh, ROTC will be uh, guarding the flagpole. Um, they'll bring it down um, uh, appropriately and solemnly, probably after most people actually left the stadium. But when the Hoosiers win, we will be hoisting the victory flag, which is the traditional IU interlocking I and U, and it'll go up and stay up until um, we have not uh, lost have not won the last game. And when we went on the road, we'll be hoisting the flag up there. So it'll be a cool thing, I think, for the campus to be able to look up and know by the basis of the presence of the flag um, that, that, we, uh, that we've won. In addition to that, we're going to uh, put all the spotlights in the north end zone red after we win. So at night, when you drive by the bypass or whatever, um, you'll, uh, you'll, if the uh, north end zone is basking in the red glow, then, then that's also a sign that the Indiana University football team won the last game. So those are sort of infrastructure improvements broadly defined. Um, and so I do think it's important that we keep, uh, keep improving our house, and I think we have. The next uh, group of items really fall under building game day awareness. And we want people to know there's a game. We want them to come to the game. We want them to go into the game. We want them to stay at the game. And that uh, begins by making sure they're aware that it is, there is a game. 
Um, we're going to have aggressive and coordinated use of social media, a lot of contests, um, video sharing, photo sharing, uh, tailgate recipe sharing, really engage with our fans uh, through social media. We have a new branded Chevy Volt, um, which runs on electricity, right? So it's very green, very sustainable, and it's got uh, uh, some cool branding on it. We're going to put speakers on it and actually drive around Bloomington and Kirkwood and um, campus the, before we get kicked off for being loud, uh, announcing there's a game. Again, my political background is uh, coming into play then. We used to do that kind of stuff all the time, and I think that'll be um, fun. Um, we're going to have Thursday uh, flash mob rallies, so we are just going to show up um, unannounced in a high-profile area of campus or the, uh, or the town with band, cheerleaders, T-shirt guns, mayhem, just to try to draw attention that, yes, that's a Thursday um, before a Saturday home football game. We're going to have what we call Friday Night Spirit Patrol, so we're going to send some intrepid members of our band and cheerleaders down to Kirkwood and have them uh, walk up and down and play some music and per perhaps go into some of the bars and hit a few notes of uh, Indiana or Indiana on uh, the horns and make sure that some of the folks down on Kirkwood are aware that there is a, uh, that there's a game the next day on Saturday. Those gigantic, we bought several to try to help with traffic. A couple years ago, we bought those gigantic uh, flashing signs that you see on the side of the road, uh, go here, go there, here's arrows. During game week, we're going to flash on there. Out There's an upcoming game um, this weekend. Again, try to utilize some infrastructure we've already purchased. We have a giant, some of you may have seen this, it's, it's, I think it's fairly cool. It's a giant mobile billboard slash TV that's been driving around campus showing football highlights uh, and then also reminding people that the game's on Saturday and uh, have a countdown clock to our opening game. We won't do that every week, but we've got that driving around reminding people because it is an early game. People are just getting settled in on campus. Some people can't believe there's a game on Thursday. There is a game on Thursday, the countdown clock helps people uh, be reminded of that. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock um, in the, uh, the clock near Woodburn Hall on campus, Coach Wilson is hosting uh, a game week event. It's, it's almost like our first uh, flash mob rally a couple days early. He's going to be there. He's going to be handing out goodies to students uh, passing in class. So a band will be there. Cheerleaders will be there. I'll be there. T-shirts will be there. Uh, it should be a lot of fun and hopefully a good way to get our our kids who just started classes today to remember that there's a game here already on Thursday. So that's a lot of our building awareness for game day. Pre-game, um, before the game uh, starts, we want to do some new fun things, and we're going to be uh, making some changes with the walk. Instead of the walk starting in front of Assembly Hall, the walk is going to start at Woodlawn and 17th. The buses are going to come around. They're going to let the kids off, uh, let the team off uh, by the, uh, the fun tailgate area, the responsible pre-game preparation tailgate area, and really try to engage with the student body in a way that, 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 that we haven't uh, done at least uh, recently. So they'll, they'll, they'll get off the bus there, hopefully have some, uh, some good engagement with the students, and then come on across 17th Street. Uh, the band and cheerleaders, or a contingent of the band and cheerleaders will lead them through the parking lot. They'll get back to pretty much where they usually start at Assembly Hall make a big left turn and head into Memorial Stadium. Um, this will be, I think, a really um, cool thing in a variety of ways, but one of them is this is a lot truer to the original HEP walk tour than, than, than that had evolved into in, in later years. Um, and, uh, and, and I think will be a, uh, the evolution of a, of a great tradition. Um, the team's going to do a little bit different uh, enter the field, in, in, in terms of how they enter the field in basketball. You know, we show kind of behind the scenes look at the team getting ready and fired up before they take the court at Assembly Hall. We're going to do the same with the football program where the uh, team's going to be uh, viewed by the fans uh, getting ready to uh, go into the uh, stadium. So that, that'll be up on the Jumbotron. And then they're going to come in with great fanfare. There's going to be a, a huge smoke effect, sirens, uh, fireworks, um, and uh, it'll be hard for people not to be aware that the Hoosiers are taking the field. This might be a good time to mention that another driver of really focusing on the game day experience has been we're, we're, we're battling against the uh, comfort of folks watching games at home. And people are feeling that around the country, uh, regardless of the 
major stature of their program, there's, 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 there's a, a, a stress on attendance because the, the home experience has become so positive. And so one of the things I think we need to do uh, as administrators is try to make the uh, stadium experience as desirable, as desirable as possible to maybe give some things that you don't even see at home. That's part of the reason I think we have to improve the phone service, improve the texting, eventually go to Wi-Fi, maybe show some things that the, that the folks at home don't see with the behind the scenes piece, like we were talking about pre-game before the fans, uh, before the team um, takes the field. Also in games, we're going to add uh, uh, on, our, on our opening uh, video, some call it the Bison video, we're gonna add um, highlights from um, uh, great moments in Indiana football. Uh, we do that in basketball, show some of the traditional big moments in Indiana basketball. We do have a lot of great uh, history in Indiana football, and we want to show that and share that um, with our fans. This is one of my favorite ones. We are going to uh, start uh, singing Back Home Again in Indiana as part of our pregame uh, uh, ceremonies. Anybody that's been to the 500, at least for me, that was often my favorite and occasionally my last um, experience during the race when I was uh, there, but as long as I saw Jim Neighbors sing back home and again in Indiana, I was good. So Tim Noble from the music school is going to be uh, singing uh, back home again in Indiana. Occasionally we'll have uh, surprise uh, uh, guests do the same thing. The mar it'll be accompanied by the marching hundreds. It'll be great pageantry, reminiscent of um, of the beginning of the uh, of the, of the uh, Indianapolis 500. Um, during the national anthem, when we all sing and the rocket's red glare, there's gonna be a huge burst of fireworks, which will not only add a certain dramatic uh, accompaniment to the lyrics, but will also signal to all the knuckleheads that haven't gotten the stadium yet that it's about 15 minutes until kickoff. So we wanna do everything we can to give people uh, a heads up that the, that the time is, is uh, almost there uh, for kickoff, and that'll be, I think, a fun way um, to do that. The, uh, the band and the cheerleaders are going to have little roving groups uh, pre-game and actually in-game, um, in engaging with the fans, entertaining the fans, teaching the fans some of these new cheers that I'm going to describe for you in a minute, and so they'll be very involved. Um, and I'm excited that the band is going to uh, conclude every pre-game um, performance by uh, spelling Indiana out in their uh, unique way um, as they play the song Wipeout. We've been continuing to try to brand Wipeout as sort of our song, Hopefully, it's, and I, I think it's taking root more, and I'd like to see it become sort of Indiana's uh, unofficial song. Ohio State's got one sort of like that that they occasionally play that drives me crazy. So I, I think we need an answer to that, and, and Wipeout's it. So hopefully that'll be played at you know weddings and bar mitzvahs and, and uh, first communions and stuff like that when, when, when Hoosiers gather to celebrate and recognize significant events. Um, in game, um, this is this is maybe the central piece of the central piece of this. So wake up if you've gotten distracted during this long description. We need to have some new cheers and traditions, in my view. And the great, one of the many many great things about college is these kids don't know whether something's been going on one year, ten years, fifty years, a hundred years. And so if we can start adding in some of these traditions before long, I think they can take root. Um, and become part of the landscape uh, very quickly. In fact, a lot of the cheers we have already were Hep's uh, uh, cheers and traditions that he started, um, and, uh, and, they, and they've, uh, they've carried over in a, in a great way. So um, I'll go through, the, I'll go, let me go through these real quick. So when the ball is, and these may seem kind of basic, but you know, we're gonna add them together, it's gonna be awesome. So when the, when the, when the, when the ball is kicked off, when, 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 when the kicker kicks the ball, we're going to encourage all the fans to yell Hoosiers. And then the band will continue on as they have in the past. On first downs, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, announcer will prompt first down, and then the fans will continue in Hoosiers pointing the appropriate direction. And we're going to have a lot of those. So we'll be, real, we'll be busy with the, with the first downs. Touchdown march will be going on between the um, touchdown and the point after touchdown. Uh, on third down, we really want to help our defense as much as we possibly can. We're going to have the band play the Jaws theme and have all the students, and hopefully led by some of the players, do the chomp, clap, and scream as loud as they can to help create a good environment uh, for us on third down. The defense calls defensive stops tap outs. 
And so we are going to uh, uh, prime the pump, if you will, on, on tap outs by um, creating a, uh, a, a tradition of all the students and hopefully the players doing an X to connote a tap out, not unlike a K, also for reasons unknown, uh, reflects a strikeout. So this will be a, a, the tap out. We'll, well, the kids will uh, hopefully interact with the players with that. And then we're going to have sort of like the K in baseball. We're going to have a tap out wall. And every time there's a defensive stop, we're going to put a big X up on the wall. And if the defensive stop is a result of a turnover, we're going to put a red X because those are, those are extra tasty. Um, we're also going to encourage the, uh, the fans to be particularly aware of uh, going crazy when our opponent is on offense and uh, they're in the red zone on either end of the field, but particularly when they're on the, uh, in the north end zone close to the student athletes. We're going to keep, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, performance awards for uh, offense and defensive accomplishments. Some of you remember the old uh, cheeseburger days in Assembly Hall, like I do. Um, we've got a deal where if the uh, offense scores 50 or more points, there's going to be special discounts at Kilroy's and Papa John's. If we get eight or more tap outs, there'll be discounts at uh, Kilroy's. That includes both on Kirkwood and the sports one where the reg used to be. And then uh, if both of those things happen, you not only get those things, but you'll get a free hot dog at the next football game. So we'll have a little fun with that and hopefully get the, the, uh, the kids uh, really interested in, um, in uh, following that and all the fans in general. The, the Student Athletic Board, who's been very involved in this process, um, really representing the views of uh, students and, and uh, at the table with the other folks I mentioned, the uh, Panhellenic Council and the Interfraternity Council and so forth, um, they've come up with, a, with an idea to have a super fan. And so they're going to have one of their member, maybe the same member, I don't know, because he or she's going to be dressed in a different costume at every game and really kind of as a grassroots piece, getting the, uh, the uh, students uh, fired up and being engaged with the, with the uh, cheerleaders who are already in the stands. They're both going to be mic'd up, so they'll be able to be heard in the student section and helping us uh, get these uh, cheers off to a good start and, and, uh, and uh, help really be a, a 12th man. Um, for football. This is fun. Okay, Fancy this one. This is a good one. Um, we have got a new football song and video being produced by Daniel Weber and Bryce Fox that this is Indiana guys. So they're going to do for football uh, with this new piece what they did for um, basketball. It's really wild to be this um, spirit traditions thing on Friday because these kids who are all freshmen stood up and went crazy during this song. They knew every, every word of it. Um, and I think this uh, football video and confidence football video will be a great uh, piece of support uh, for football and it will include a lot of these uh, new traditions and whatnot we've been uh, um, talking about. It'll be unveiled in the uh, Big Ten opener against Penn State. That'll give them a time to get a little footage and incorporate in and, and put in the video some of the things that, that are new for this year. So we're really pleased that Daniel and Bryce agreed to do that for us. There's going to be more stats, more scores, more highlights, more replays in the Jumbotron. Again, trying to uh, uh, make it as, a, as much of an experience uh, being at home as possible. Um, so people want to see the scores. They want to see the, uh, the highlights. The, the Big Ten, I'm not sure this has been made public yet or not, but uh, I think it has. The, the Big Ten, uh, frankly, I was on a, on a committee that urged this, has uh, removed the prohibition from replaying more than once. Um, controversial uh, plays, or as they describe it, where the uh, official's judgment could appropriately be considered a substantial part of the play. So we'll be able to show uh, replays, including controversial replays, whether they're ones that are under review or not under review um, in the stadium. And so hopefully people will um, um, enjoy uh, being able to see that actually in the stadium, not trying to call home and say, you know, were his feet in or, or not. But you probably could call home anyway because the, te the phone service is so terrible you can't can't get a line out. Um, we're going to do a This Day in Indiana football uh, feature. So again, during the game, uh, reminding people of, uh, of, uh, of great uh, moments in Indiana football on that very day. That'll be fun. Um, we've gotten a lot of mileage out of the new helmets. That's been uh, fun through social media. We're going to give away one of the helmets at each home game to a lucky Hoosier fan who will walk away with one of our uh, extremely cool uh, helmets where uh, tradition meets innovation. This is sort of pedestrian, but it's, it's, there's no one silver bullet. There's a lot of different things. We're going to have a new um, birthday party ticket promotion. 
And so if a kid wants to have, or parents want to have their birthday party there, when your kids are little, you're always looking for something to do with your kids on their, on their birthdays. You can come, you get four adult tickets, 12 youth tickets. The kid's name is on the tickets. It's, a, it's a, a put on the tickets by Mike <coughs> Roberts personally in nice print. Um, and it's also up on the Jumbotron. It's 150 bucks. So those tickets, depending on whether it's a Big Ten game or a non-conference game, would be between the value would be between 280 and 320 dollars. Get this for 150. Get a couple extra things, and again, hopefully, we'll start making some Hoosier fans for life at a young age. Uh, we're going to have fireworks for the first time. We're going to shoot off fireworks right before the start of the second half. Again, a to you know fire up everybody, but b let people know that uh, that the game's getting ready to start, and they ought to come in from the parking lot if they haven't done so. Um, already and then we've, we've talked about the new helmets before we think that's a big deal the kids really like it and they've been well received all around so that's in game stuff um, we're going to continue the things we've done um, before kicks for keeps not whole park red light special the William Tell overture I think has transferred well from basketball we are, we're going to be doing uh, even more on sustainability and our efforts to be the greenest athletic department in the Big Ten I think you'll notice I, I'm hopeful that you'll notice uh, uh, being a much cleaner around the athletics campus on game day and, and shortly thereafter. Um, as some of you already know, we've been doing a lot of uh, branding around the, the complex. We spent a couple hundred thousand dollars just this last year, and we'll, we'll see some of that as we walk over here um, for dinner and keeping up the spirit poster. So it's a long list. I've got, uh, we'll hand that out. Um, but uh, um, again, there's no silver bullet, but we're doing a lot of things across the board, and I think you'll continue to feel an exciting uh, game day environment Memorial Stadium and with the, the, the team's uh, continued improvement, um, I think it's going to be rocking and rolling in there and before long we'll be at 52-929 week in and week out.